hello everyone in this video I am going to explain monitor concept in process synchronization so before discussing monitor uh, let's see what's the problem with simultaneous access let's say we are having some data and these data are going to be shared among some processes so what will happen uh, let's assume there are two processes so process P1, let's say trying to access to data B and C. So P1 is working on these two data. Now if process P2 also access this data C, so their simultaneous access will leave data C in a inconsistent state. And that condition is known as race condition. So why we study these synchronization construct to avoid this? race condition so in order to solve this problem we need to have a resource allocation algorithm so what this algorithm will do this algorithm will take the request from the process and it will see whether this access uh, will create any problem or not if not it will allow the access in case if it will create a problem like this one if p2 also try to access this data a in that case this algorithm will block it so monitor monitor is actually a module and this module contains the data which are going to be shared among processes and it also having some procedures so if a process wants to access some data they cannot access this data directly they need to call procedures and those procedures in turn will allow access to data so uh, with monitor uh, only one process can enter in monitor so with monitor a lock is associated associated sorry uh, let's say there are three process and all those three process trying to enter in monitor so only one will we succeed in entering in the monitor so every monitor will be having a lock so we can say only one process is allowed to enter in monitor at a time so monitor is a module that encapsulate shared data structures procedures that operate on those data and synchronization between concurrent process procedure invocation so there is one more thing actually that is known as conditional variable which i will explain in later slide so which uh, this part we have already seen only one thread or one process can enter in monitor at any time because whenever a process is trying to enter in the monitor that process need to have access to the lock of this monitor so let's say if this process is trying to enter in this monitor and right now this monitor is free so this process will enter in this monitor and this process will be having this lock now if after some time if this process p2 also wants to enter in monitor it cannot because lock is associate associated with process p1 so only one thread or one process can enter in the monitor at a time. So it will be blocked. Now what will happen with blocked threads or blocked process? So as we know every monitor will be having a lock and all the process which are blocked they will be put in a queue. So this queue is for this monitor so if there are five processes and all those are trying to enter in monitor one will be enter inside the monitor and four will be waiting so if think this is the scenario like one process already in monitor process p2e is waiting for p1 to release this monitor and one more process trying to enter in the monitor so what will happen this P3 couldn't get the lock and it will be put inside the queue. 
so this queue is for monitor all the process which cannot enter in the monitor at that time they will be waiting in this queue so this is a simple example of monitor uh, this is the shared data and this is the procedure so whenever a process or thread wants to access this data or want to manipulate this data they will use the procedure of this monitor so we have con uh, taken only one procedure withdraw so this procedure will deduct some amount from balance and it will return that balance and let's say there are three threads which want to execute this withdraw operation at the same time so what will happen let's say thread t1 called the withdraw operation or withdraw procedure uh, it will execute balance equal to balance minus w so let's say it will update the balance uh, this one is actually a small b let me correct it so this is the small b this is not a capital p okay so after updating this one uh, let's say a processor um, switch the threading so at this time thread switch occurred and uh, cpu is assigned to thread t2 or t2 start executing so t2 also call withdraw procedure but right now t1 is having that lock so t2 cannot continue its operation and let's say the switching also occurred after this one because this is blocked and the same thing will happen with thread t3 while it's calling withdraw procedure it's not having any lock so it will be blocked and finally switching will be for t1 and t1 will resume its operations so once t1 is done t2 uh, will continue and once t2 is done t3 will continue so this is a basic idea uh, how monitor works now uh, let's see let's model this bounded uh, buffer problem the actual solution i will discuss later i am just giving you a hint so for bounded buffer we are having a buffer and we are having some procedure we are having two processes one process is going to put some data in this buffer and another process is going to consume data from this buffer we are having procedure put item and get item now the question is that if this consumer call this procedure get item and right now this buffer is empty because initially buffer is empty so what will happen if this consumer is start waiting inside the monitor how other process going to enter in the monitor because this consumer will be having the lock and uh, we have uh, seen we have discussed this that only one process or thread can enter inside the monitor so if consumer is already in the monitor how processor uh, sorry producer is going to put a data in the buffer so uh, the thing is that if a process wants to wait inside the monitor here comes the role of conditional variable okay so now let's see how conditional variable is going to have to solve this situation so conditional variable uh, are just uh, reasons for which a process is going to wait like in bounded buffer a consumer will wait if the buffer is empty and but for producer this condition will be different producer will wait if the buffer is full so if a process is waiting for some reason that reason will be considered as a conditional variable so conditional variable actually provides synchronization inside the monitor 
because outside the monitor that lock will be used to provide synchronization visual exclusion but inside the monitor if a process wants to wait so for that thing conditional variable will be used so this part we have discussed and three operations can be performed on conditional variable wait signal and broadcast let's see how these operations works so wait operation so if a process enters in monitor and after entering if that process call wait operation so what it will do that process will release the lock for monitor and that process will be put in the waiting queue okay so whenever a wait operation is called the current process will release the lock for the monitor so that other process can enter inside the monitor and that current process will be put inside a queue signal operation uh, signal operation it will wakes up one process which are sleeping as a result of call to wait so a process uh, which actually put in queue as a result of call to wait operation that process will be wait so signal operation it will wakes up one of the processes from the queue and uh, after this one the lock is automatically passed to the waiter uh, let's say process p1 is calling signal and there is one more process p2 which is actually waiting in the queue and that p2 actually called wait operation in past so when p1 will call signal operation p1 will release its lock to the monitor and that lock will be passed automatically to the process p2 and p2 will resume its execution and the third operation is broadcast so broadcast actually signal all the waiting processes so these operations we will discuss with a example then it will be more clear to you so let's see how this wait and signal operation what are the so conditional variable remember this one if a process is going to wait for a region so that region we will model it as a conditional variable condition variable and for every condition there will be a queue associated so the previous queue we have discussed that queue is for the monitor and this queue is for the conditional variable so how wait and signal operations are called on conditional variable so there may be a number of conditional variables so what we need to specify the name of condition variable and then we need to specify the operation so if we specify the first statement like condition variable dot wait so this process p will be put inside the queue so this is the working of wait and in the case of signal condition variable signal it will signal one of the waiting process and those process will start their execution so now we are going to take a very simple example single resource allocation problem we are having a single resource and there are two process which are trying to access that resource so we want to provide mutual exclusion so we will write a monitor in this monitor we will put the resource we are having a single resource we will provide two procedure one procedure for acquiring the resource and the second one is for releasing the resource now the thing is that if a process is acquired this resource at the same time if another process is calling this procedure so how that process how this monitor is going to know whether this resource is free or not so for this purpose we are going to take a boolean variable which will show the status of this resource whether this one is in use or it's free so we are taking a boolean variable busy 
So the initial value of this variable will be false. It means resource is free. Now, uh, if this resource is not free, what will happen with the other process? Whether that process, what will happen actually? So we want that process to wait. So we will take one conditional variable. So conditional variable, conditional variable actually uh, in practice are implemented by Q. So we will take one conditional variable. So this Q we are representing as a conditional variable. So this is the definition for our monitor. Monitor then name of monitor. This is the data boolean busy for showing the status of this resource and condition non busy this is the conditional variable on which a process is going to wait or it is going to signal and we are having two procedure acquire and release so in case of acquire what we will do we will check whether this busy is equivalent to false or true so if this is true it means that resource is already in use so in that case the process which actually called acquire procedure that process will be put inside the queue and which queue queue of non busy conditional variable so non busy dot wait it means process will be put inside the non busy queue so it means this queue but if this is not true if this boolean variable is having false in that case we will come here and what it will do it will uh, make this bg equal to true and then that process will start using the resource at the time of releasing uh, once the work of process is done that process will release the resource and it will set this bg variable as false to show that this uh, resource is now available and next it will call non busy dot signal so what this will do it will signal a waiting process from this queue now you need to uh, understand this thing when this wait processor is called at this time the current processes process will be put inside this queue and uh, monitor lock will be released so that another process can enter inside the monitor and here in case of non busy dot signal uh, when this uh, instruction is executed lock for the monitor will be released and that lock will be passed one of the process waiting in the queue and in case if this uh, queue is already empty and if you are calling this instruction in that case signal will not be having any effect and uh, two more things uh, these are the constraint like uh, it is possible that a process called release operation and uh, it set the value of busy to false and it called non busy dot signal after calling this statement it might be possible that a new process come and that process trying to enter in the monitor and what that process will find this that process will find that bg equal to false so there is a constant that no other program can intervene between the no bg dot signal and the continuation of a exactly one waiting program so after this statement waiting process will start execution this is the constraint one and the second one uh, when this signal operation is called which process will be continued which process will be allowed to continue its execution so the process is actually waiting for long now uh, let's see this scenario with our monitor let's say p1 and p2 both are doing some work with this resource but before that they will call acquire procedure and once their work is done they will call 
release release so here uh, if p1 and p2 trying to access this monitor at the same time only one will be succeed in getting the lock and that process will enter inside the monitor so let's say this uh, process p1 called acquire function or procedure so this acquire what this acquire will do as you can see uh, initially the value of bg is false and this is the definition for acquire if bg then non bg dot wait else bg dot bg equal to true and the value of bg is false so we will come in else part and it will set the value of bg to true and the resource will be allocated to process p1 so now p1 will be having resource r and it will continue its execution so let's say p1 is executing some code here some working it's performing some operation on this resource uh, meanwhile process p2 also trying to access resource r now let's see what will happen so if p2 will try to access this resource Uh, if you can see uh, the value of bg is true and uh, because of this this process p2 will be put inside the queue why because uh, in acquire you can see if bg so bg is equal to true in that case our condition is true non bg dot wait so process p2 will call a wait pro a uh, wait operation on this conditional variable and this conditional variable is represented with this queue so p2 will be put inside the queue now when this p1 execution is done at the end it will call release operation and this is the definition for release operation it will set the bg value to false so this value will be changed to false and then it will call signal and what this signal will do it will wake this process up so now uh, when this p2 is active p2 will continue its execution it will call acquire procedure then it will set bg to true this resource will be allocated to process p2 and finally it will release the resource so this is a very simple example of single resource allocation problem with monitor in the next tutorial i will explain how bounded buffer problem can be solved with monitor thank you very much for watching <laughs>